Hi, welcome to Right to the Top. I'm Adam. In today's video, we're going to look at vocabulary, but more specifically, we're going to look at transportation vocabulary. Now, again, it's important when you're building your vocabulary base to try to have some sort of groupings. Don't try to remember every word that comes across like, randomly. Try to isolate words into specific categories and topics, and that way when you're learning them within that chunk, within that group, it's a little bit harder, uh, a little bit, sorry, a little bit easier to remember them, especially since you can relate them to other words, okay? Now, the list of words we're gonna look at, actually, it looks like a lot, but it's really not, and a lot of these words, many of these words, you already know. So you're wondering why am I putting these words in the list? Why am I including these words in the transportation vocab video? Well, <clears throat> one of the things I want you to do when you're building your idea bank, okay, and for those of you who don't know what an idea bank is, there's a video up here you can link to and watch. When you're building your uh, idea bank and you're collecting your vocabulary, it's very important to also remember to make a separate category for collocations. So it's important to understand when to use take, when to use ride, when to use drive, when to use get in, and when to use get on, and when to use embark. So even though these words may look very simple, these are the words that if you make mistakes with, will cost you the most points on the IELTS or TOEFL writing section. Because remember, at this level, at this stage of your English learning, the graders expect you to have certain basics. Right? For example, you should know the difference between it's with an apostrophe and without an apostrophe. If you make a mistake with lose and loose, the graders are looking a little bit harder on you because, again, this is IELTS, this is TOEFL. You're, they assume, the assumption is, that you're, you're trying to get into a university or college in an English-speaking country. So if you don't know the differences between these basic things, it's a bit of a problem. And that's why I've included some of these here. Okay, so we're gonna go through all of these. Let's get started. Take, so what do you take, what do you ride, what do you drive? Basically you take any vehicle that is operated by someone else. You get inside, but there's somebody else is operating. You take the bus, you take a taxi, you take the train. Now you could take a plane to Paris, but again, remember you wanna also have flexibility, you wanna also show a bit of range, you could just fly to Paris. Fly includes the plane, just like drive includes the car, but you can drive other things, so you have to be a bit careful. You can only fly a plane. You're not gonna, I mean, technically you could fly a hot air balloon to Paris, but why would you, right? So, and ship, same. You can take a ship, or you can go by ship, or you can sail to England from Canada, etc. Ride, you ride in an open vehicle. Right? Opening means like there's nothing around you, like you're just generally sitting. Motorcycle, you ride a motorcycle, you ride a bicycle, you ride a horse. You don't have to be sitting though, you could be standing, you ride a skateboard. But essentially there's nothing around you. You're like in an, in an open air and you're on some sort of uh, vehicle, okay? Drive, when you drive something you're operating it yourself. Mostly we use it with car, truck and boat because you're driving all of these things that have an engine or that have a motor. If you're not sure, you can operate all of these things. Operate anything that, is, that has a motor or a, an engine, etc. Now, you get in, when you get in something, you're sitting. So you get in a car, you get in a truck, you get in a taxi. You go inside and you sit. You get on something that you're standing, okay? So you, you're standing, so you get on a train. You get on a bus, even if there, there are seats, you can walk to the back, you can walk up and down the train, you can walk up and down the bus, you can get on a boat, on a ship, I should say, because you can walk, and in a car, there's nowhere to walk. In a taxi, there's nowhere to walk. You're just sitting right away. All of these things, you, when you're getting on, you're standing. Eventually, you can find a seat. Unless it's on an open air vehicle, in which case, like you're sitting, like you get on a motorcycle, you get on a bicycle, and you sit, but you're in open, air. Again, it's a little tricky, little details here and there, but the more you practice it and the more you read, the more these become tattooed on your brain, as they say. Now, uh, board. 
board, embark, disembark. When you talk about a ship or you talk about a train, you can board the train, you can board the ship, you can board the bus. It's the same as get on, essentially. Now, the, the reason I want to mention embark and disembark, embark, get on, disembark, get off, you go directly with the vehicle. Embark a train, embark a bus, embark a ship. If you embark on something, and this is, again, that's why it's important to understand phrasal verbs. It's important to understand Id idioms, collocations. And this is why the graders want you to use these things. Don't be afraid of phrasal verbs in your writing. If you embark on something, means you're beginning a journey. Embark on a mission means you're beginning the mission, the journey to that mission. Embark on a career, your career is a journey. You're starting your career. So be careful not to mix embark on with embark a vehicle. Now, mode of transportation and means of transportation. Generally speaking, they're almost the same. Mo many people use them interchangeably. Mode, technically, is the approach to traveling. So you're traveling by air, by land, or by sea. The means of transportation is the actual tool, the actual vehicle you're using, car, boat, taxi. Now, you can use mode of transport or mode of transportation, means of transport, means of transportation, both are okay. Some are, one is a little bit more popular in uh, British English, one is a little more popular in American English, both are technically correct. But when you talk about transports, for the most part, we're talking about commercial. Transportation, we generally more about uh, passenger. And speaking about commercial and passenger, Commercial vehicle or commercial transport, we're talking about cargo. Okay, I forgot to mention this here, actually. I'll put this here. Commercial vehicles carry cargo. Uh, shipments, basically, to companies to companies or materials or parcels or etc. Passenger vehicles carry passengers. So commercial vehicles have a cost. There's the cost of shipping, the cost of the labor, gas, or whatever you're using, tariffs, customs, etc. Passengers have a fare. They pay, they buy their ticket, they get on, they get off. That's all there is to it. Okay? And you can use transport, you can use vehicle for basically both of both of them. Passenger transport, not as common. Passenger vehicle more common. Commercial transport more common. But again, interchangeable. Now a lot of you will have a, there's always going to be a possibility of a question about traffic. Big cities versus small towns and modern lifestyles and all these things. A lot of people talk about traffic. So you can use the word congestion or you can use the word traffic. Now traffic doesn't mean many, 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 many cars that you can't move. Traffic just means any movement along a highway or a sidewalk. You can even say pedestrian traffic. If you're going to open a business, like a store, you want to open on a in a location that has high pedestrian traffic or high foot traffic. A lot of people walking back and forth that will see your shop and come inside, right? If you want to talk about a traffic jam, that's when cars are so many cars that they can't move, then you can talk about traffic jam. Now, never use the word jam without the word traffic. They go together. This is a fixed call location. If you say jam, it means something else. It could be something you put on bread and eat, very tasty, like strawberries or blueberries or whatever. Or it could be a slang word for a difficult situation. You know, he's in a jam, he's in a difficult situation. If you want to talk about traffic, traffic jam, both together. Now, I've seen people, you say traffic jam, traffic jam, traffic jam. You want to have uh, synonyms. You want to have uh, options. Heavy congestion. Congestion just means traffic. It doesn't mean a lot or a little. It just means it's happening. Heavy congestion is the same as traffic jam. Gridlock. Bottleneck. Because a bottleneck, a bottle is wide, and then it comes to the top where you actually drink. That's the bottle's neck. It becomes narrower. All the lanes come together. All the ones in the back slow down. That's why it's called a bottleneck. You could also say bumper to bumper traffic, but that's more informal, more slang, not for academic writing. Now, commute. If you're talking about traveling from work to 
home to work to home, we call that a commute, okay? You do this every day, you do the same route basically every day. If you want to talk about rush hour traffic, you can just say the morning commute or the evening commute. The morning commute is understood as the time that everybody goes to work, and therefore there's heavy traffic, and there are traffic jams. The evening commute, people are coming home from work. Heavy traffic, traffic jams, okay? So these are extra words that you can use for that. A lot of people talk, when they're talking about the environment or city living or the problems with city living and the problems with cars, etc. The most common things I see are cars release CO2 or cars release harmful gases. That's fine. If you want to be more specific when we're talking about the exhaust, the pipe that comes out of the back of the car, cars emit fumes or emit uh, noxious gases or toxic gases or they discharge gases or the emissions that come out of cars are very harmful to the environment or the fumes. Basically, these are all the same thing. So the gases are emissions or fumes to release, to emit, to discharge. Again, just have options when it comes to this particular topic. Now, a lot of people say move to another country or go traveling in another country. You should try to avoid another country because A, it's two words. B, it's the very common words that everybody knows. Go abroad, travel overseas. So abroad and overseas. These are words that you probably know. I'm not teaching you anything new here, but I never, I almost never see people using these two words in writing. I don't know why. Very good words, try to use them. And other ways, move to another country, emigrate, relocate, or re relocate overseas, or relocate abroad, resettle in another country, abroad, etc. Uh, resettle in, my, in a new host country. If you're moving to a new country, that new country is your new host country, or if you're visiting, it's a host country as well. Be very careful with migrate. Migrate just means move from place to place. We usually talk about people who are looking for a job. They will go to one place, they will work. When there's no more jobs, they will go to the next place, find work. So they keep moving around. Emigrate or immigrate means making the move once and resettling. So be careful not to confuse these words. Again, we're talking about cars. It's electric cars, not electronic cars and not electrical cars. And I see this mistake quite often. If you want to talk about Tesla, you're talking about an electric car. And you don't fill it, you charge an electric car, you fill up a gas car, you fill it with gas. So autonomous cars, self-driving vehicles, same thing. Autonomous means working on its own power, okay? It doesn't need somebody else to control it. Now, of course, all of these words are very useful, but if you don't actually put them into practice, it's meaningless. That's how you're going to improve your vocabulary and improve your writing. So to do that, uh, here's a question for you. More and more people are choosing to work from home via computer, and companies are increasingly allowing their employees to do so. What might be some causes of this development? What are the benefits of doing this? So using the words I gave you until now, try to answer this uh, essay question using as many of these words as you possibly can. Again, just to get yourself some uh, practice. I have also written an answer to this. It's on my website. There's a link in the YouTube description box. You can go see my essay uh, for this topic, okay? And that's it. Very straightforward lesson, some vocab help. Remember, collocations are very, very important. They're looking for them. Make sure you know how to use them correctly. If you make mistakes with basic words, it hurts you a lot more than using big words correctly or semi-correctly, okay? If you have any questions, please go to the YouTube comment section and ask me there. If you like the video, please give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And come back next week for more, hopefully, helpful lessons. Bye-bye.